Octavianus Augustus, often simply known as Octavian, stands as one of history's most influential figures. As the first emperor of the Roman Empire, his reign from 27 BC to AD 14 marked a pivotal moment in history. His rule brought an era of relative peace, the Pax Romana, transforming Rome's political landscape. From this video, you will learn about the remarkable life of Augustus, his rise to power, how he became the most powerful man in Rome, and his lasting legacy that shaped the course of Western civilization. Gaius Octavius, who would later become known as Augustus, was born in Rome on September 23rd, 63 BC. His family has roots in the Volsatian town of Velatri, located about 25 miles south of Rome. Octavius' birthplace was Oxhead, a property on the Palatine Hill in close proximity to the Roman Forum. During his early years, he was given the cognomen Turinus, possibly to honor his father's victory at Turi over a rebellious group of slaves shortly after his birth. Suetonius noted that the Octavian family had a distinguished history in Velatri, with streets and even an altar dedicated to an Octavius who had been a leader in a war against a neighboring town. However, due to the crowded conditions in Rome, Octavius was raised in Velatri, his parental family's hometown. In his writings, Octavius briefly mentions his father's equestrian lineage. His family had a military tradition, with his parental great-grandfather, Gaius Octavius, serving as a military tribune in Sicily during the Second Punic War. His grandfather held various local political offices, and his father, also named Gaius Octavius, had been the governor of Macedonia. His mother, Atia, was the niece of the prominent figure Julius Caesar. Octavius' father passed away in 59 BC, when he was just four years old. His mother later married Lucius Marcius Philippus, a former governor of Syria. Philippus, however, took little interest in young Octavius, which led to him being primarily raised by his grandmother, Julia, who happened to be the sister of Julius Caesar. Julia passed away in 52 or 51 BC, and Octavius delivered her funeral oration. After this, his mother and stepfather took a more active role in his upbringing. Octavius officially transitioned into manhood by donning the toga virilis at the age of 16 and was elected to the College of Pontiffs in 47 BC. The following year, he was tasked with overseeing the Greek games in honor of the Temple of Venus Genetrix, which had been built by Julius Caesar. During this time, Octavius expressed a desire to join Caesar's staff for his campaign in Africa, but yelled it when his mother protested. In 46 BC, he received consent to join Caesar in Hispania, where he planned to fight against the forces of Pompey, Caesar's late rival. However, Octavius fell ill and was unable to travel. Upon his recovery, he embarked on a journey to join Caesar but faced a shipwreck. Nevertheless, he made his way through hostile territory to reach Caesar's camp, leaving a strong impression on the Roman leader. From that time onwards, Caesar allowed the young Octavius to share his carriage. Upon returning to Rome, Caesar named Octavius as the primary beneficiary in his will. At the time of Julius Caesar's assassination on the Ides of March in 44 BC, Octavian was far from the center of Roman politics. He was studying and receiving military training in Apollonia, Illyria. However, the will of Julius Caesar changed the course of Octavian's life. In Caesar's will, Octavian was named as his primary heir, effectively making him the inheritor of two-thirds of Caesar's vast estate. This bold move secured Octavian's position as Caesar's political heir as well. Upon his adoption, Octavian assumed his great-uncle's name, Gaius Julius Caesar, as was the Roman tradition. However, he refrained from using the name Octavianus, possibly to avoid driving attention to his more modest origins. Historians often refer to him as Octavian during this period to distinguish him from the deceased dictator. Octavian faced significant challenges to his path to power. He did not possess the immense wealth required to climb the Roman political ladder. 
His initial move was to demand a portion of the funds that Caesar has earned made for a campaign against the Parthian Empire. Octavian's daring appropriation to these funds and the annual tribute from Rome's near eastern provinces to Italy set the stage for his ascent. Octavian began to consolidate his power base by rallying Caesar's veteran legionaries and troops designated for the Persian War. His connection to Caesar and his willingness to reward soldiers attracted the support of many. By June, he had amassed an army of 3,000 loyal veterans, each receiving a bonus of 500 denarii. Upon arriving in Rome in May 44 BC, Octavian encountered Mark Antony, Caesar's former colleague, who was embroiled in a standoff with the assassins of Julius Caesar. Octavian presented himself as Caesar's rightful heir, emphasizing his support among Caesar's former troops. Antony, on the other hand, had alienated many Romans by opposing the deification of Caesar, and he initially refused to hand over the money designated for Octavian as Caesar's adopted heir. Tensions continued to rise as Octavian garnered the support of Caesarian veterans and formed alliances with senators who saw Antony as a threat. The situation escalated when Antony attempted to pass laws that would assign him the province of Cisalpine Gaul and Octavian recruited more Caesarian veterans, undermining Antony's position. The conflict culminated in a showdown between Octavian and Antony in the Battle of Mutina. Octavian, along with consuls Hirtius and Pansa, defeated Antony's forces, but both consuls were killed, leaving Octavian in sole command of their armies. The Senate, however, rewarded Decimus Brutus, one of Caesar's assassins, more generously than Octavian for defeating Antony. In response, Octavian stayed in the Po Valley and refused to aid any further offensive against Antony. After marching on Rome with eight legions in August 43 BC, Octavian was elected consul on the 19th of August 43 BC. In October 43 BC, Octavian, Antony and Lepidus formed the Second Triumvirate, officially recognized by the Senate in November. This former power's sharing arrangement differed from the informal First Triumvirate of Pompey, Julius Caesar and Crassus. The Triumvirs initiated proscriptions, branding numerous individuals as outlaws and confiscating their property. This was driven partially by the need to fund their upcoming conflict against Caesar's assassins, Brutus and Cassius. Conflicting accounts exist regarding which Triumvir was most responsible for these proscriptions. Octavian settled in Italy and chose to allocate land to his discharged soldiers, uprooting populations in the process to prevent potential uprisings. In 42 BC, Octavian and Antony defeated Brutus and Cassius in two battles at Philippi, with Octavian later claiming both victories as his own. Antony, however, accused Octavian of cowardice for delegating military command to Agrippa. After their victory, Territorial divisions were made among the Triumvirs, with Octavian receiving Gaul and Hispania. Antony sought an alliance with Cleopatra in Egypt. In 40 BC, Octavian married Scribonia, a relative of Pompeius, while Antony divorced Octavia and pursued a relationship with Cleopatra. This led to conflict between Octavian and Antony, as Octavian portrayed Antony's actions as un-Roman. Octavian sought to resolve the issue but Antony refused, leading to the deterioration of their relationship. War loomed with Antony and Cleopatra. Octavian used Antony's concessions to Cleopatra and Armenia as propaganda, depicting Antony as a threat to Rome's preeminence. In 37 BC, Octavian and Antony mounted a joint campaign against Sextus Pompeius, who had threatened the grain shipments to Italy. This campaign, after some difficulties, ended with the defeat of Pompeius in 36 BC. Octavian divorced Scribonia, married Livia, and gained the Senate support. The year 32 BC saw a major rupture in Antony and Octavian's relations, resulting in a significant portion of the Senate and consuls leaving Rome to join Antony. Octavian won two key defectors and used their information to confirm accusations against Antony. The Roman Senate revoked Antony's powers as consul and declared war on Cleopatra's regime in Egypt in 31 BC. In 31 BC, the Battle of Actium took place, where Octavian's forces led by Agrippa defeated Antony and Cleopatra's navy. 
Octavian subsequently pursued them and in 30 BC they both met their tragic ends. Cleopatra committed suicide by snakebite and Antony fell on his sword. The deaths of Antony and Cleopatra marked the end of the conflict. With their demise, Octavian emerged as the sole ruler of Rome and he eliminated potential rivals including Caesarian, the son of Julius Caesar and Cleopatra. These victories secured his power and allowed him to control the Roman world. However, he had to navigate the complex political landscape of Rome and establish a new form of government that would bring stability to a war-torn nation. Octavian's path to becoming the first Roman emperor was not straightforward. Rather, it was a careful dance of consolidating power while maintaining the illusion of a republican government. Octavian understood that the Roman people and the Senate were very of centralized authority and he needed to appear as if he was upholding the traditional republican values of Rome. Upon returning to Rome, Octavian along with his trusted ally Marcus Agrippa was elected as consul by the Senate. It was a symbolic move that reinforced the facade of the Roman Republic. However, Rome was in a state of near lawlessness due to the years of civil war and political turmoil. Octavian had the responsibility to bring stability back to the city and its provinces. His primary aim was to relieve the political pressure on the courts and ensure free elections, at least in name. On January 13, 27 BC, Octavian took a significant step towards consolidating his power. In a calculated move, he returned full power to the Roman Senate and relinquished his direct control over the Roman provinces and their armies. While he technically gave up some of his powers, he still retained the loyalty of active duty soldiers and veterans, as well as the patronage of many individuals and groups throughout the empire due to his immense private fortune. This combination of powers and influence formed the basis of his autoritas, the foundation of his political actions. Despite his appearance of relinquishing power, the public was well aware of Octavian's vast financial resources. In 16 BC he donated substantial amount of money to the public treasury, emphasizing his commitment to the well-being of Rome and the provinces. Historians argue that the foundation of his power came from the various powers of office delegated to him, his personal wealth and the patron-client relationships he established throughout the empire. In parallel with these developments, Octavian's position as the most powerful political figure in Rome and most provinces was solidified. He took control of the majority of Rome's legions and while the Senate still had some control over provinces, it posed no significant challenge to Octavian's authority. This was in line with Roman traditions in times of crisis, when prominent Romans like Pompey had been granted similar military powers. The turning point in Octavian's journey was the conferment of the title Augustus by the Senate on January 16, 27 BC. This title held religious significance and symbolizes the approach to divinity. By distancing himself from titles associated with monarchy and kingship like Romulus, he aimed to maintain a facade of renowned republic under his guidance. The Senate also confirmed his role as Princeps Senatus, giving him a unique status as the first among equals. As Augustus, he adopted titles like Commander Caesar, son of the deified one, emphasizing his familial connection to Julius Caesar and the Roman tradition of victory. He successfully transformed the Caesar name into a new family line, distancing himself from the image of a monarch. The second compromise between him and the Senate, known as the Second Settlement in 23 BC, addressed some concerns and power struggles. It granted Augustus the powers of a censor and allowed him to wear consular insignia, reinforcing his authority in the eyes of the people. However, Augustus refused to take on dictatorial powers, even during a food shortage in 22 BC when the populace demanded it. His firm stance during such crisis solidified his image as a responsible and wise leader. The Roman military played a crucial role in Augustus' reign. He celebrated 21 instances in which his troops proclaimed him Imperator after victorious battles. These successes included the conquest of Northern Hispania, regions in the Alps, Illyricum and Pannonia, the territories of Galatia, Judea and Syria, the quelling of rebellious tribes in Spain and efforts to secure the Eastern Front against the Persian Empire. Augustus' diplomatic skills were also remarkable. 
he negotiated with the Parthians for the return of the battle standards lost by Crassus at the Battle of Carrhae. This diplomatic triumph was celebrated through monuments and art, symbolizing Parthia's submission to Rome. Although Augustus expanded Rome's territories, the catastrophic battle of the Teutoburg Forest in AD 9 marked a significant loss. The stability of the Roman Empire was always a priority for Augustus, who aimed to prevent further civil wars. He introduced a client-state system to secure Rome's eastern front and appointed Tiberius as his diplomat to the east. In the end, Augustus successfully consolidated power, preserved the facade of a republic, and provided the Roman Empire with a period of relative peace and prosperity. His reign laid the foundation for the Roman Empire, and the stability he brought allowed for the Pax Romana, a period of relative peace and prosperity that lasted for more than two centuries. He remained known as one of the most successful and influential rulers in Roman history. Augustus passed away on the 19th of August 14 AD, with rumors suggesting that his wife Livia poisoned him, although some view this as unfounded. He was succeeded as emperor by his adopted son Tiberius, Livia's son and former husband of Augustus' only biological child, Julia. The Julian name and title Augustus became standard for Roman rulers. Augustus' achievements were recorded in the Res Geste Divi Augusti, inscribed throughout the empire. He transformed Rome's infrastructure, built numerous monuments, and established a strong financial system. His taxation reforms increased revenue and his meticulous administration of Egypt made it a vital asset. The month of August was named in his honor. Although critics portrayed him as a power-hungry ruler, Augustus' legacy as a wise, effective leader remains significant, having shaped Rome's future for generations.